I'm going to show you on this plate, right? So you want to take your plate, make sure that you bevel the edges with that uh, beveling tool. What, what, what do we call it? Anyone remember? It's the draw tool. Okay. We take that draw tool and then we file the corners. All right. So I want to make sure my cor corners are curved and that they're all filed. Okay. Once I've filed those corners, I have to file the tops of the corners so there isn't a point there. Everything is going to be smooth, right? Start with 800, sand one direction, sand the other. 1,000, one direction, other. Make sure you always sand the bevels too, and then all the way up to 1,500, okay? If you really have a very detailed print, I would sand it up to a thousand, up to 2,000 if it's all lines, right? But if it's value, you don't have to worry about it so much, okay? Then we take our image, and we take our photo. We put uh, transfer paper on the back of it, okay? Make sure you tape it down. I usually tape it down on one side so I can like clip it and look at it, what it looks like. And then we transfer our image so this is what my image looks like, right? So this is what it should be, okay? What are you transferring? You guys can come closer, I'm not gonna bite. What are you transferring when you transfer the image? Like the Yeah, lights and values. So when I'm looking at the picture, I'm looking at the lights and I'm actually mapping out the blacks and around them, okay? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so I will like show this to the screen. That way you can see it. Right, that's my image. And then I will pass this around to you guys. And the great thing about the transfer paper, this is what I like about it, is it will not rub off, okay? It'll just stay on the surface, because that's wax. So I want you to look at how much detail I put in, and that's me, and I can pretty much like correct anything in between. If you need more detail, you need at least that much, you gotta draw it in, okay? So I brought a whole bunch of prints, right? This is the one of my daughters. We're gonna talk about lines specifically, like when you look at the clothing, I want you guys to pay attention to them. These are what we call test plates. We're not gonna do a test plate this time, we're gonna run right into the print, but I want you to see the types of lines that you can create by cross hatching and by creating like different types of textures and stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys this. I have to show the video, all right? Here's another one, these are all the same. Right, so you can see kind of like by increasing the types of patterns that we put on the surface of a plate, we can actually begin to change the value or the pattern of what we're looking at. So we always want to kind of keep that in mind so you can use that one, you can look at that one. Right, and then we do something called a test plate. I thought these were actually good ones, these are wrong. Uh, this is for aqua tinting, but we're gonna do like, this is right here, a test print. You'll see little numbers next to them, yes. Do you guys see the numbers that I etched next to them? What do you think those numbers are for? The value. Yeah, no. Time. So if you see a one, it's one minute. If you see a four, it's four minutes. If you see a five, it's five minutes. And the amount of time that it stays in the acid is what determines how dark it is. So it's not just the accumulation of lines. So you have two ways to make something actually feel darker. It is how the lines are actually patterned, one on top of the other but it's also how long you leave it in the acid, right? So a five minute etch and a four minute etch with the same types of lines will look almost identical, except the five minute is gonna be a little bit darker than the four minute. You'll see that up here in the corner. If you look at the five minute and the four minute, they're gonna be slightly different in value. It's not because of how the lines are created. It's because of how much time was actually in the acid, okay? All right. You can see I actually wrote the numbers upside down. Some of them say 25, but they're flipped because this was a while ago, okay? All right, so that said, we have a couple of different types of tools. I'm gonna to show you guys these tools and I have to show the camera the tools. This is why I hate recording, especially when I'm teaching you guys in person. But I will do it. That was a dry point tool, okay. The one tool that I asked you guys to all get is this. This is like a really cheap uh, etching tool, okay? You guys should all be familiar with this. This is a stronger, heavier duty one, and then I have like a very, very fine one that I made. Okay, it looks like that. So I'm gonna pass these around. These are the three tools that I'll be using most of the time when I'm etching. Why do we want not want like a really heavy, thick tool? I'm gonna have you guys keep it down just a little. Ian. I'll see you just a little bit because it's recording. Uh, <laughs> just because it's going to record. Uh, why don't I have you guys like use these really thick tools? I mean, you can't get as much detail in there. 
Yeah, the weight of the tool is actually gonna change the line weight. So we wanna keep that line weight really, really thin, right? So that's why I want you guys to look at these and pay attention. They're all gonna make different types of marks. You guys can pass those around if you want, or you can just stare at them. It's totally up to you. Hey, Jaime, don't drop them. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so we don't want a blunt surface tool. We want like a tool that has like a really, really tight point because those points are gonna make a difference when we have okay? I like to start with a really fine tool. So I'm gonna start with either this guy or this guy. Uh, and the types of lines that I make are gonna actually make different types of marks on the surface. So I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna zoom in. Ooh. I am right-handed. So let me flip this. All right. So you guys should probably get pretty close when I do this, just so you can see, because you're not going to see anything from where you are. Is it just me or is it burning hot in here? Is it hot? Yeah, it's burning okay. hot. Okay. No focus. All right, so I'm going to start around the eyes and the face. And if you notice, like I always start where it's darkest. And I want to be aware, like, the mark that I make, right, should always follow the form. So when I'm thinking about the eye, right, I want to make sure that I'm, like, moving around the eye. So my line's going to be just a little curved so it feels like it's a curved surface, okay? If it's black, I'm also going to crisscross. But I'm going to leave space between the lines, right? Most of the time, I'll use a magnifying glass when I'm doing this because you can see these lines are super, super tight and super tiny. Uh, I will pass this around as soon as these guys get like a look on what I just did. Okay, but I want you guys to see like how close those lines are, but how they're equally spaced, right? They're not connecting. So you wanna leave space between them. If you don't leave space, you'll have something called an open bite. The two lines will etch together and then they'll pop. And when they pop, they don't hold ink. They leave like an ink space, like an ink dot. So you'll have like improper spacing. So you don't want to create an open bite. So when you make lines, always make sure that you leave, I was gonna zoom in and zoom out, always make sure that you leave, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, always make sure you leave like a little bit of space between those lines, okay? Uh, I like the weight of this tool, so I'm gonna pick this up to make my little details. And one of the things I want you to see is how when I'm making lines, I'm always drawing in the direction of the shape, right? So it's a curved surface. So I'm thinking about the curve on that shape of the surface. I'm coming around and I'm I can crisscross the lines right but I don't want the lines to like bump into each other and make one line right Does that makes sense but I can crisscross the lines as much as I want I'm not gonna do anything but if I bump the lines together and they become like really really thick and they do something like that whoop, right you guys see what it looks like see how it sparkles like it's copper if I see too much copper it's gonna create an open bite and it's gonna expand okay so these sharp tools really rarely do that. They're really gonna show the lines pretty clearly when they etch. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna look at my photo reference. We'll zoom out. Come on. This is hard to do on video because you have to show both. There we go. I'm going to look at my photo reference and the values, and I'm going to start building out those values, okay? And I will actually draw pretty fast. So, you know, it's not about speed so much as it's about, like, understanding how your values are going to get organized. This white highlight on the eye is the only white on the eye. So I'm just going to have little lines that kind of indicate a little bit of gray. And the rest of the eye is super, super dark. Now, how am I going to control that dark? Do I want more lines? Yeah. What do you guys think? Not necessarily, right? What do I want to do to make it darker? Oh, you can also soak it longer? Yeah, I want to make sure that I lay it in the acid longer. So if I have too many lines on the surface, right, it's going to start getting too close together, and those lines are going to pop. So in these areas, I'll think about it. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to leave that in the acid for more time, but those are the lines I'm going to use. I'm not going to add more lines, because if I add more lines, it's gonna open up too much uh, of the copper and it's gonna begin creating an open bite. Okay, so you gotta remember that term, open bite. It's an important term. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just gonna follow the line work that I created. Come down. Now, here's the other thing that you gotta ask yourself. If I am etching, can I only etch once? What do you think? Can I take the, uh, the copper and put it back in the acid after I've etched it? Yes, you can, right? Can I print it with the hard ground on it? No, right? If I put ink over this, what's gonna happen? If I put it in the press, what's gonna happen? The press is gonna pull off everything, right? It's gonna be a mess. So when you etch it, right, you have to test print it. The only way I can test print it is to wipe everything off and see what the etch lines are underneath. So the process of etching is a process of repetition. And this is why I have this plate. You will see this plate right here. It already has hard ground on it and etch lines underneath it. So I'm gonna pass this around. Can I re-etch that plate? Yes. Yeah. The lines will just be cumulative, right? They'll add on. So whatever lines I wanna add on, I can add on. And if I make a mistake, can you erase it off of a copper plate? I mentioned this a little bit before. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Yeah, but can you do it off of a plexiglass plate? Mm -hmm. No, you can't, right? Because that, plexi, uh, that plexiglass is gonna just scratch, right? But we can actually use all sorts of materials to actually scratch off the copper and then smooth it back out, which is called, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking out. Uh, scratching and burning, no, scratching and burnishing. Yeah, scratching and burnishing, which we'll talk about next week or in two weeks. Uh, but if I ever want to re-etch, I have to go through the process of cleaning the plate, putting the hard ground on it, letting it dry, and then just re-etching it. But you don't have to retrace it. Why? Because um, it'll already be there. Yeah, you can see the, the etch lines right underneath that, the um, aqua tint, I mean the hard ground, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna place feathers on this surface. All right, I'm gonna switch to my fat side so I can switch the line and make it a little bit meatier. And then I'm gonna place some values. Okay. I'm gonna go to my needle. My needle will make the lines even meatier. So you can change the thickness of your line that will change the way that the values kind of read just by changing your tool. You could even grab like a stick, like literally like a piece of wood and sharpen it to make a specific kind of mark that you want to make. I'll use an exacto sometimes and just use the stick to make marks. What's, your, what's the only rule that you want? When I'm making an etched line, the line has to go through the hard ground and penetrate to the copper, okay? If I can see that line like right there, then I know that it's gonna etch. But if the line is just on top of the copper and not going all the way through the hard ground, you can see that there's a little bit difference in value. This one's a little bit lighter, that one's a little bit darker. I need to make sure it goes all the way through the copper and it's very clear, and you'll see like a little bit of the wax that actually sits on your finger, okay? So always make sure when you're drawing lines, you go all the way through the wax, okay? That's the big thing. Don't make lines that are just sitting on top of the wax. They'll look similar, but they won't be as deep, okay? You don't need to scratch the copper by any means but you do need to penetrate the wax. Okay, so the, the lines are basically the same as a dry point line, except for one thing. What's the one difference? Can anyone tell me? I mean, they won't fade when you press it. Yeah, they won't fade. I'm talking about that, that is the key difference, but what's the other difference? The difference in actually putting the lines on. Do you see me using a lot of like pressure? No, you need no pressure, right? So it should not hurt your fingers. So this is not a pressure thing. You're drawing lines just like you would be if you were drawing them in real life. Imagine that those lines are actually going to be pen lines, right? That's the kind of the easiest metaphor for them. But they're just much more accurate than pen lines. So every single mark will show. And they can be extremely detailed, extremely light, extremely dark, extremely heavy just by controlling how you apply them on the surface, okay? So I'm gonna draw a few lines over here, make sure that it's showing. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. So for next week, all right, I would say what I want you to do is try and at least etch about 75% of your image. Okay, and then we can check whatever needs to be etched. 
and we'll talk about throwing it in the acid next week. I will try and get this done enough that we can start working in the acid. And I can show you this actual plate and we can compare it to the dry point plate, okay? Does anybody have any questions about this? Okay, so let's talk about a few, few things. I wanna talk about like negative space. Uh, so we understand how to draw objects. When I'm dealing with negative space, one of the things I always do, like let's say I want like a really specific shape, is it's the very few times I will use a line, right? Because that line creates like a barrier. And then from that line, I'll actually draw lines out, starting from that line. If I just don't have a line there, and if I just use uh, lines to kind of create my edge, the edge will be a little bit choppy, so I use lines to kind of like solidify that edge, okay? And with negative space, it's kind of the same thing that I think about with the form. I wanna draw in the direction of the form. So I like to keep my lines moving in the same direction, but you can see I made a mistake right there because they're kind of like diagonal. Um, so I will try to keep everything in the same direction Okay, and just kind of go down, right? And I'll make that whole area just even lines that are spaced. And I can control how dark or how light it is based on whether or not I go back and forth and create a pattern. Now, what if I make a mistake? Sharpie, right? Let's say I make a mistake. Oh, I don't like these lines and they're going in the wrong direction, right? How many layers of Sharpie do you think I need? Four. Four, Four right? Good, you guys remembered, All right? So I can go back. All right, I'm gonna let it dry. I'm doing this really fast, so it's not really drying, but I'm gonna try and do it. All right, if you don't let it dry, the Sharpie will actually pick up the line work and it will start melting the um, hard ground underneath. So you do have to let it dry a little bit. And I think one of the tricks that I've learned is drawing really lightly with the Sharpie, so the Sharpie just kind of like leaks ink onto the surface and not pushing onto the surface. So I'm just kind of like drawing really lightly and letting the Sharpie kind of sit on the surface. And that's like four layers right there, okay? As Soon as it dries, guess what I can do? I can go back in and I can like find my drawing and then I can connect the lines in the direction they should go. And I'm gonna draw all the way through now the Sharpie and the Charbonnel hard ground, okay? So now the lines that I drew underneath should not show. If you don't put four quote coats in, I will tell you those lines underneath will still show. So make sure that the Sharpie is thick, okay? It will actually etch through the Sharpie and show you the lines underneath because the Sharpie isn't like as strong as the wax. Just make sure it's thick, okay? So the Sharpie literally will build a thickness if you do it enough times. Okay, so that's how you correct something if you made a mistake. What you don't want is Sharpie all over your hard ground because your hard ground is really the surface that you wanna use. But if you need to make corrections like I did here, right? You can use Sharpie in small amounts just to kind of like fix certain areas, okay? Especially because sometimes your plate will get scratched. Like you'll take it home and there'll be like a little mark like that. You know, you can kind of say, oh, I don't want that and just Sharpie that out, okay? Does anybody have any questions about like the big steps? Do I want to throw this in the acid with this big chip showing on the corner? No. no, it will etch. So have a big black chip with the rest of your print. So if it's not intentional, make sure you always block it out, right? That's what we called it. So I want to come in make sure it's like four layers of Sharpie. I would always, always, always before etching, go around and always do your sides again, okay? That's like form of habit. Because your sides are the things that are wrapped, they're the things that are bumping against your books and whatever in your backpack, so those are the things that tend to get injured the most. All right, make sure that you have the plastic on the back before you print anything. Put your initials on the back of it, always, before you print anything, so everyone knows what plate it is, just in case it doesn't have any lines on it. And then try to get at least, how much of your plate done by next week? 75. 75%, okay, cool. Any questions? No. That's it, normally this would take an hour, but we would go and do the acid room too. I'm gonna wait until the other students are here. Okay, I will post this online for everybody. But that is how you make your etched lines. I'm gonna fail the class. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, so when you have cleaned your plate, right? I'm gonna keep the plastic on, don't take it off uh, because you're gonna probably put it back in the acid. The first thing I wanna do, and don't spray it all over everyone, is just let the alcohol kind of sit on the plate. And the alcohol will break down the, um, what's it called? Sharpie. Sharpie. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, and as it sits, right, it will just kind of liquefy. So that's the first thing I do. And you just want to kind of like brush, brush, brush it off. And I just kind of like let it stay there, okay? I don't need to make a big mess. And then you don't really need that much gam salt. Like that's all you really need. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in. All right, and all I do is circular pattern. That is the key. All right, circular, circular, circular. Hey guys, I'm recording. Just so you know. So, no, no, it's okay. You can go talk. Just go talk outside. All right, so, and then you'll start seeing the plate underneath. You can brush with a toothbrush as much as you want. It's not gonna scratch the copper. The toothbrush, we use baby toothbrushes. We should probably order some more, Ian, just mm -hmm. for the hell of it. Okay, yeah, because these are all getting trashed. They're pretty dark. That's also on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like recording stuff anymore. Um, and then, dirty rags, that's what we like to use. And then voila, okay? And you will end up with like this. Holy mackerel, there are lines on my plate, right? So, and if you see the plate already, I will like zoom in. You can actually come in, you, can, you guys can all come close and look at this. You'll see the lines are actually different darknesses without any ink in it whatsoever. See how the lines actually change in value? Mm -hmm. That's 10, that's 15, that's 35 minutes. And you can see the 35 minute ones are starting to break apart. They'll get fuzzy and big. Okay, that's what we call a bad edge. I did it intentionally, just so you guys could see what happens when the lines get too close together, they pop. Okay, so I will clean this up. Make sure all, this goes in the red trash can, but if you look really closely, let me get this in the camera and then I'll show it to you guys. You can see how those lines after 35 minutes will start to pop compared to the lines right here that are really, really clean. So. That is why uh, we want to always make sure that we, I'm going to pass this around, you guys can look at it. We want to always make sure that you consult your professor full times so that you don't. All right, so now we have our plate. What do we want to do with a rooster? Anybody know? First thing I want to do is grab paper and it's right next to you two ladies. Can you drop a piece of paper about this big in the water mm -hmm. for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I like to soak the paper before I start to ink. Does anyone know how long you should be soaking the paper? That's fine. How long should you soak paper for with a plate that is going to be etched? At least 10 minutes, up to an hour. So you have a big open gap, right? You cannot do the same for what? Liner cut paper. For liner cut, right? Liner cut's five minutes, five minutes max. You don't want to go too wet. If it gets too wet, the paper will absorb the ink and it won't sit firm, right? The ink will start to like break apart here. It don't matter because the paper gets pushed into the lines, right? Whereas the paper on a lino cut sits on top of the lines, right? You want the paper to actually get pushed into the lines. So there's gonna be what we call an embossment through the whole paper, or technically it's a debossment because everything gets pushed in, okay? Cool? All right, I have no idea what ink that is, and that looks really, really messy and gross. Uh, what, is that the Charbonneau? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I got like that. Ooh, you people are so messy. What do we say about the ink? Keep, it, keep nice. it clean, keep it in a line. All right, so you want to use a little bead like this. You don't need that much. Okay, and I want to push the bead into the plate. And this is a process that I do. I've, I've inked plates at least 10, 15 different ways and seen multiple master printers do it many different ways. And the thing that I've learned is there's no right way. There is a wrong way, but there's no right way. I like, for the first time I print, to take my little finger and push all the ink into the plate in a circular motion. Because then I know it doesn't miss any grooves. Because some people don't know how to use Tarleton really well or they're very young. So when they're starting to like use Tarleton for the first time, maybe they won't get the ink into all the lines. But this kind of reinforces the fact that I'm getting ink into all the lines, okay? So first things first, I want to push that ink into the surface. We have these little sheets of newsprint, which we should at some point like start cutting them into squares, but we don't have to do it this much. Uh, and we just use, that way we don't waste so much. Mm -hmm. We just use newsprint, uh, the newspaper, not newsprint. Newspaper works better. It's like a softer paper. It's like a crappier paper. 
and I want to take off all my excess ink, okay? Sometimes if it's a really big plate, I'll actually pre-wipe the ink. Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to save my what? My tartan! Okay, throw in the trash. Okay. Then we're gonna take the tarlatan. Here we go. Whee! And then what do I want to do? I'm gonna try and like demonstrate this in front of my camera. Oh. Oh. Get higher. Alright. Don't worry, it's only showing this. You guys are not on camera. <laughs> Alright. Does anyone remember how to wrap? No? Like No, first you start with a little beat. <laughs> Just kidding. Get it? That was like a. That, that was a dad joke right there. Are you stealing my sneakers? That better not be from the fridge. I'm gonna come hunt you down. It's from the bucket. All right. So the first thing I want to do is grab a tarlatan. Grab it from the middle. All right. Fold it in. Okay. Fold it in. Fold it in. I got big hands, so I can make like a big tarlatan ball, right? It should be like that. It should be soft, but firm. That's kind of the key. If it sticks out of your hand, you have too much tarlatan, probably need a smaller piece of tarlatan, okay? Uh, uh, I, this is a small place. So you have to kind of like hold it very gently from the corner, because I don't want to leave fingerprints. Uh, but remember we talked about this? You want to go onto the plate, off the plate, right? Onto the plate, off the plate. Onto the plate, off the plate. And notice what I'm doing with the plate. What am I doing? I'm turning it. Now, I don't do this all the time. I'm just showing you like how I work, right? So I don't need to turn the whole paper. You can if you want. Uh, if there's ink on the paper, you wanna make sure that the back of your plate is not touching the ink because then it's gonna get all over the press. Okay, so you wanna be using pretty clean area, okay? I'm just gonna do this really fast. Okay, and this is much easier to wipe than plexi. You're gonna see the focal points on it a lot better. This is a little too far. I'm gonna bring it over. There we go. Because you're looking at that shimmer and that shine. All right, it's so shiny. And once it's shiny, you know it's ready to print. All right, what's the other material that we talked about using? The Webrel wipes, okay? And you can see all the little line marks that I did just to kind of like lay in where my line, where my figure is gonna be. And you can see where it did not like stop out correctly. There's all these little dots where the Sharpie did not cover. So I have a lot of mistakes. I can show you guys how to fix those mistakes. We will probably do them on a different day because if I show you today, your heads are gonna explode. And then everyone is gone. These people just like leave class, thinking class is over. Right. So, all this is recorded. <laughs> I hope you guys hear this. You know who you are. Wow. <laughs> so, I'm gonna like wipe the excess, wipe the excess, wipe the excess, and come all the way around. And then I will always graze the top of it and the edges. Okay, so now my plate is going to look all pretty like this. See how shiny it is? Whee! All right, I'll pass that around. All right, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that I put my plate somewhere in the center. I look at the numbers always. I will remind you guys how to do this. So if it's over here, why is it not right? On this side, I'm seeing four. On this side, I'm seeing two. Technically, you can put it on any part of the grid, but whatever part of the grid you put it on, just be aware of spacing. So let's make it hard. Let's put it off to the side. Oh, wow, why are you making it hard? So that they can learn, right? So what am I looking at? Anybody know? What do I want to look at when I'm looking at the grid? How many boxes are on the side? Yeah, I just want to look at boxes, right? So I can not look at any numbers at all and be like, oh, one box space over here, one box space over there. This is easy. Ian picked me the perfect piece of paper. So all I got to do is put it one box below, one box around. Put it on the right side of the paper. One box below, one box around, and boop, just drop it. Okay, what do I need to do now? Newspaper. 
You cannot tell them the answer. You <laughs> looked at me. You looked at me. I was hopeing you never heard Alright, grab me a newsprint with a small print like this. I just use one sheet of newsprint, fold it in half. Oops, sorry. So I'm just going to take that, fold it in half. Okay, you guys should memorize this process. Take your newsprint, place it on top. Okay, what do I need to do now? Blankets. <laughs> so I have to come over. If you can't do this by yourself, ask for some help. But you can take the blankets, right? And you want to flip them down, okay? Thank you. And then what do you need to do? Run the press. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you are rolling this thing all the way. Okay, so when I roll the press, you want to make sure that you are doing it at an even speed, so don't stop. Okay, stopping is bad, even if you hit that pressure, as long as it's correct. If the pressure is like pushing it back, don't throw it through. But even rolling is key. All right, as soon as it hits that little button right there, you can stop. And then roll it back. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to show you guys how to properly remove the paper. To remove the paper, don't just whip it off. It will take the paper print with it. So I always go at an angle, hold the paper down, especially with small prints, right? And you always wanna come up from the top corner. If you're gonna go up from the bottom corner, uh, there is the probability that you can like swipe the paper. So if you go up from the top corner, it's a little bit easier because I can hold this down, right? You wanna pull it back and then just flip your print over and you can check and see the magic that is printmaking. Uh, and you guys can all come and see what happens with these lines. Now, these lines look like they etched badly, but man, they still etched pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> they just looked horrible. Uh, I mean, but they do look pretty fuzzy and they have a halo around them. That's right? bad uh, inking. That's not, that's actually not. Anyway. Oh, yeah, they're actually pretty clean when they're you get really up clean on lines. Them. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, but anyway, you can see the difference. I'm just showing the video in value between the 10 minute. Uh, the 35 minute and this over here is like 25 minute, uh, 20 minute, right in the middle of her mouth. Okay. So now I have all the lines down that I can, where I can put uh, more um, hard ground on my plate and I can start it over again. But do I put it on the plate while there's ink there? No. No. I have to wipe it all off with Gamsol, clean it all off. I have to, uh, what's it called? Copper cleaner. Copper cleaner. Make sure that it's all uh, degreased and then I can put the hard ground on. Okay. Any questions? Yep. All right. How much time is this line right here? Uh, so this is bad stop out with a marker. Mm. That actually leaked through my marker marks. So that's not, we can't really consider that. Okay. Yeah, but that was a 10. So these are all 10 right here. That's 10, that's 10. Uh, this is 35, it's black right there. And that's 20 in the middle, okay? So this is 35 right here. 